We're well, glad to know you're still there and watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time now to go to another topic, and this time we have to discuss with us uh, Nick Aguli, Public Affairs Analyst. We're talking about uh, uh, electricity bill that has been signed into law. Nick, good morning and welcome to the program. Uh, good morning, Nigerians, and uh, uh, good, good morning to everybody who is watching us today. Okay, uh, well, Nick, um, for a long time we've been crying that our power supply is epileptic, that uh, there are so many problems in the power sector, and people have been talking about the need to demonopolize that sector, uh, just as it has been done in some other sectors, like the telecom and all that. And right now, the bill that has given room for states and in, even individuals to produce, to distribute uh, power, has been signed into law. Is this the moment we've been waiting for? I, I, yes, indeed. It's the moment we have been waiting for. It has been what we have been advocating for for a long, long, long time. And we're happy that uh, it has finally uh, arrived. That moment has finally arrived where this law has now, uh, this bill has now been signed into law. Uh, so it, it is really good because uh, I think we have been unlucky. I, I always say we have been unlucky because it is not possible that uh, how many people have ruled Nigeria today? There are definitely more than 10. I can take a count, but there are more than 10. And it is unfortunate that of all these 10 people, or more who have ruled Nigeria, even in our democracy alone, this is the fourth person who is sitting in the saddle. You know, so uh, it is unfortunate that uh, for all these people who have ruled us, whether civilian or military, have taken their eyes off the ball of electricity. You know, you, you can't understand it, but it has happened that these people did not consider electricity as important. Whereas, without electricity, there's no modern economy that is going to do well. Regardless of your monetary policy, regardless of your, your fiscal policy, regardless of your economic uh, vision, regardless of whether you have vision 2020, vision 2025, Regardless of your agricultural revolution, green revolution, whatever all the visions that we have had, regardless of the fact that we brought in world-class brains like the Okonjo Ewellas to manage the economy, there is nothing that is going to happen to this economy if there is no enough electricity. And that basic fact has been lost on Nigerian leaders. From 1960, when we got independence to today, it's unfortunate, but that is the fact. Because if we look at the data, the data is mind-boggling. As I speak to you today, Nigeria, a country of 200 million people, is working with 3,000 megawatts of electricity. 3,000. That is one, two, three. When you look at a country like Brazil, with, with a similar population like us, on 150,000, I mean, can't our leaders think about something like that? Why will Brazil be generating and distributing 150,000, and we are on three? You look at South Africa, our southern uh, uh, neighbors. South Africa's population is about 65 million. They are generating and distributing about 50,000 daily, 50,000. So you look at Nigeria and you say 3,000. You look at Qatar, Qatar just, that just hosted the World Cup the last time. Qatar's population is around about 3 million. 3 million is probably the population of the FCT from where I'm speaking to you, to you today. And Qatar is generating and distributing 8.5, that is 8,500 megawatts of electricity. 8,500. 3 million people. Their electricity is almost three times Nigeria's 200 million people. 
So our leaders travel far. They go. I don't want to mention the UK, which is a developed nation, which is where I live. The UK <clears throat> is generating and distributing 730,000 megawatts per day. 730,000 to a population of about 60, 63 million people on a land mass that is just 25% of Nigeria. 730,000. And Nigeria is on 3,000. 3,000. So I ask myself, our leaders travel globally. You know, our leaders see what is happening in other nations. Our leaders have advisors. Our leaders have to know what is happening elsewhere. Why has it not bothered them that 3,000 megawatts to a population of 200 million is the real cost of Nigeria's economic underdevelopment? You know, that is the real cost, but the cost has never been tackled. Instead, we change finance ministers or managers of the economy. We change central bank governors. We, we, we try to tweak a, a vision from Vision 2020. Now we're talking about Vision 2050, which was launched by the Buhari government before he left. But we're not tackling the real cost, which is electricity. And to make matters worse, Nigeria is blessed. Nigeria is one country that is blessed with an abundance of almost every source of electricity. As we speak today, globally, gas is the biggest source of electricity. Gas is accounting for more than 70% of electricity that is, that is generated and distributed around the world. And Nigeria is a country that has even a greater endowment of gas than crude oil. We are actually a gas nation, given the resources that we have. Unfortunately for Nigeria, our leaders from 1960, 1960, when we gain independence to today, they watch our gas burnt, fled. We, we, we spend money to produce the gas. And when we bring the gas to the surface, we set fire to the gas. Set fire to the gas as if gas has no value. Yet gas is the biggest source of electricity generation in the world. So you ask yourself, how can a country that is starved of electricity, 3,000 megawatts, I have to keep shouting 3,000 so that if President Tinubu or his handlers and the governors and their handlers or advisors are listening to me, let them just have this number behind their head. 3,000 megawatts of electricity. How can a country that is on 3,000 megawatts of electricity continuously set its gas on fire? How? That's a very so, cogent question, I mean, Nick, and a very landmark decision that the president has taken. Before now, only the president could generate electricity. But with this new law, uh, companies, individuals, state governments can now generate, transmit, and distribute electricity. However, th there are still some Nigerians who are confused with this law that has been uh, signed by president because in March... 2023, uh, former President Buhari signed into law the constitutional amendment, the constitutional amendment allowing states to generate, transmit, and distribute electricity in areas covered by the national grid. All right? And then a few days ago, President Bola signed the 2023 Electricity Act into law, demonopolizing Nigeria's electricity sector. Now, these are two different things, but for the sake of clarity, to those who are still confused about the differences, uh, can you throw more light on what is different from what uh, Buhari signed in 2023, March 2023, and what President Tinubu has just signed? It's a very important question, and, and thank you for that. Uh, actually, there is nothing that is wrong. There is nothing that is wrong. Uh, what has happened is that the Constitution was changed to allow to take to take the electricity sector from the exclusive list the things that are on the exclusive list in the constitution are only for the federal government so uh, the what president buhari did was to take electricity sector out of the exclusive list 
into the concurrent list. And the things that are on the concurrent list in the constitution are for all the three tiers of government, federal, state, and local government. So that is what President Buhari did. did. We needed to first remove electricity from the exclusive list on the constitution into the concurrent list. Because if you didn't do that, any other law that you pass is subject to the constitution. So that what uh, President uh, Tinubu has done now is to now sign a law that gives the nitty gritty of how this electricity generation, transmission and distribution can be done by the three tiers of governments or even corporate entities or individuals. So, so that is that is what is the same thing like in elections. The constitution provides that we should hold an election. But the nitty gritty of how the election will be conducted is in the electoral act. So if you have an electoral act that is in disagreement with the constitution, then the constitution will always uh, carry precedence. So if President uh, Tinubu now signed an electricity act that has now allowed uh, uh, state government and uh, uh, corporate entities and individuals to generate and transmit and distribute electricity without changing the constitution, this act would have been null and void. Mm. Because anything that contravenes the constitution is, con is a provision in the constitution that, that matters. So this is what happened. So President Buhari changed the constitution and President Tinubu has now given us the nitty gritty law okay. that now specifies all the provisions that now governs this electricity uh, liberalization okay. that has uh, now gone to the state. So that this is just what has happened in terms of the legal framework. Okay, Nick, um, just before we wrap up, because we are, we, our time is up, um, only three states so far have the electricity law that can govern it. And um, right now, the states that do not have these laws uh, will be will be supervised by the NEC, the National Electricity Regulatory Commission. Uh, so how do you think this will play out? Uh, is, is it too early for these states that will still be regulated by NEC, or you think they can grow at the same, uh, the same pace? Because right now it's only Kaduna, Edo State, and Lagos State that have these laws that can run this uh, new uh, outlook of electricity in Nigeria. So what do you think about the fact that all other states, apart from these three, have the laws that can regulate electricity? I, I think what, what is going to happen for the states that don't have existing laws to regulate electricity is for them to just hit the ground running. The state assemblies that have been inaugurated, uh, or uh, state assemblies have actually been inaugurated before today, is national assembly that has been inaugurated today. Should just hit the ground running. They should get their act together. They don't have to reinvent the wheel. They can take the existing uh, laws in other states and look at it and just uh, amend them to fit their own individual circumstances in each of the states. So that, uh, the states should just get, get, on to, get on with it. With the knowledge that without electricity, nothing is going to happen to their economy. But before we wrap up, there's an important thing I would like to say. Um, uh, I thank uh, President Buhari for amending the constitution. I thank uh, President Tinubu for signing the Electricity Act. But they shouldn't stop there. President Tinubu shouldn't stop there. Because as we speak today, it is only the federal government that is in control of the electricity sector assets all over Nigeria. So the, set, uh, the federal government is in a prime position uh, and they can't just hand over this responsibility to the states and say, you go carry on. We still have billions of dollars of worth of electricity assets that are being controlled by the federal government. And now the federal government controlled electricity sector has been giving us 3000 megawatts. And that is because there are bottlenecks in that uh, sector, which President Tinubu now needs to deal with. Having signed the law, he needs to sit down with all the players in the electricity sector in Nigeria, three major players, the, the, the distribution, comp uh, the generation companies, 
the transmission company and the distribution companies together with their regulators and all the other pricing mechanisms within the electricity sector and understand why is it that for all these years it has been 3000 megawatts that we have been generating and then once he debottlenecks he unlocks those things that have been preventing us growing our electricity sector the, even the federal government owned electricity assets will start doing better and i can give him one simple solution generation is, is to a large extent okay it was sold to uh, businessmen like the tony Lumelus and the and the uh, hotel dollars of this world they have the capital to come in actually their problem has always been transmission which the federal government owns 100 percent as we speak today and because the transmission capacity is so low generation is unable to expand its own capacity some of the national system power system failures that we have had where generation trying to be a bit ambitious by pushing a bit too much into the transmission and transmission will just collapse yeah. so T well, president tinubu should just go ahead the next step he should take is to totally privatize that transmission sector all okay. right great hand over that transmission sector to nick yes. time will not allow us we need to continue this conversation because you're making very valid points we also need to look at the generator, those who sell generators in this country, <laughs> we also look to look at the fact that the government, the federal government is the greatest debtor to major uh, uh, power companies. But time will not allow us to look at this today. But thank you so much for your time. That's the much we can take today, right? Yes, yes, that's much we can take. Uh, Nick, thank you. Um, uh, let me just give you a quote. Technology is a useful servant, but a dangerous master. Technology is a useful servant, but a dangerous master. That's according to Christian Lowe's Lange, a historian. And that's where we wrap it up. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. I am Maureen. Do have a great day.